also do musical theater. So it looks like Facebook just joined. Um, so uh, I guess we could do this again or uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so Zaria is correct. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. So our first, our next person is Vera. Uh, hi, I'm a junior at Rancocos Valley Regional High School, and I do a little bit of everything. I don't really have a set in stone. I do like musical theater, and then I do choir, and I paint, and I just do a lot. <laughs> it's awesome to have to carry many hats. So. Um, just to run through it again, we're with Jasmine Livingston. She does writing and poetry. We are with Lauren James, who, I forgot what you do. I believe it was musical theater, right? Uh, just acting. Like, just acting. Like acting. I'm going to say you were at BCIT. I'm so sorry. Um, Kira is also, um, uh, Kai. oh my gosh, I'm just destroying everyone's name. Kiara. But <laughs> Kiara is musical theater. And then Jordan, you are what again? Sorry. A dance. Yeah. Dance. That's what I thought. Okay, cool. So <laughs> with that destroying everyone's names and life purposes, uh, we will move on to a game. So I'll pass it over to Chow. Okay, so as a little icebreaker, so we all get to know each other and some weird facts about each other, <laughs> we will be playing Two Truths and a Lie. Does everyone know how to play it or should I explain the rules a little? Thumbs up, yeah? Yeah, all right, awesome. So I will go first. <laughs> so I am the youngest in my family. My favorite TV show is Pretty Little Liars. And I one time somersaulted down the stairs on purpose. Well, I can hope that one of them isn't a lie, right? I can hope that the somersault one is undeniably, irrevocably true, but I don't know. <laughs> yes, the somersaulting down the stairs is true. Yes! <laughs> You're the youngest in your family. I am the youngest. <laughs> So my favorite show is not Pretty Little Liars. It is The Walking Dead. I live for Norman Reedus. <laughs> That's totally fair. And also the, if we're gonna go into like theater and design and that sort of thing, the makeup in that wild. Oh, it is wild. <laughs> yes, they all do it themselves and I'm just blown away. I'm like, wow. Disgusting, Anyways. <laughs> but wild. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will uh, pass okay, it on. Job. So pick someone else. I'll pass it on to Jasmine. Okay, hey guys. So let's see. I am originally from Jamaica. I own two dogs and I've been trapped in Disney World once after hours. See, I can't weigh in on any of this because it's not a fair game for me because I know her very, very well. So I will keep my mouth shut. <laughs> you don't have two dogs. Wow, yeah, that's literally it. I don't have two dogs at all. But please share <laughs> yes. the story of you being locked in Disney. Please, yeah. please. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I was really young, we had went and we were leaving and it was like a really big crowd of people, but I was little, I dropped something supposedly and I went back for it. And, you know, next thing you know, I'm just hanging back there. Disney's closing. I'm like standing in the middle of main street, just chilling. But it was okay. I hope you got out fine. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm here now, so. I, I like the, that. oh, but it was okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Jasmine, pick someone else. Not me. Yet. Okay. What about uh, Kiara? All right, mine, mine are kind of weird. So 
The first one is I share a birthday with Kim Jong Un. Secondly, <laughs> I almost drowned at Dorney Park. And third, um, I got lost in the forest once. I feel like the Dawny Park one is a lie. You don't share the same birthday as King John Un. Yeah, that fact is way too strange for her to just make that up. <laughs> it's way too it's way too specific. It's the last one. Well, so you've never gotten lost in the woods. Yeah, I've never gotten lost in the forest. The other two are true. I've gotten lost in the forest like many times. I, what, what am I doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> hey, it's good to know, I guess, that it's not normal to get lost in the woods. <laughs> Though there is a song about it. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> So uh, you can pick somebody else. I'm going to pass it on to um, Lauren. Um, okay, I've kind of come up with this on the spot. Um, so uh, my, I have my three are, um, I've, I'm voice acting in my first uh, project recently. Um, I've danced in several parades, like in the sort of nearby New Jersey-ish area. Um, a little bit outside of there, and I've never left uh, the USA. Is I'm gonna it, go. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Is the lie that you've never left the USA? Yeah, that's <laughs> actually that's the one. Um, yeah. I mean, there's not much to say. I've been, I've been like out to like one or two, like visiting like relatives and stuff, but that's about, yeah. You could pass it on to someone else. Um, I'm gonna say uh, Zaria. All right, so. I performed with the marching band in New York. I never rode a jet ski. And I, I gotta think about this one. <laughs> I almost read a thousand books within a school year. Which one was your favorite? Well, I was a little kid, funny enough. Oh. So I was a bunch of like, but they weren't children books per se. It was more like chapter books. So like mm, the Magic Tree House. That was definitely my favorite series reading. Yeah, my, <laughs> my brother read a lot of the Magic Tree House books. But that okay, so we got one that's a truth. It seems like <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but I guess I called it. Is the jet ski one the lie? Is that the lie? Yeah, I actually did marching band last year, funny enough. How was that? It was fun. I did color guard. It was cool. a lot, especially for like my first year, <laughs> but we won a lot, so. That's, you know, that's the game. <laughs> All right. So you can pick somebody else. All right, I'm going to pass this to Vera. Oh, I've been waiting. <laughs> um, I have two older brothers and one sister. My camera uh, can take a picture up to the face of the moon. And I share my birthday with Justin Bieber and Jensen Ackles. You don't have two older brothers. Uh, yeah, that's true. I, I have two older brothers. I just don't have a sister. I'm the only, I'm the only girl in my family. But your camera could take a picture up to the moon? 
Yeah, it's a P900 uh, Nikon camera, and it can zoom up to the face of the moon. Wow. I'm so jealous of that. <laughs> I got it for Christmas like two years ago, and I use it a lot. I'm not really good at taking pictures of people. I kind of like stationary objects. <laughs> so I tend to take a lot of nature pictures and just like pictures of the moon when it's like super bright and everything. Wow, that's so cool. Also, we just got someone else joining the, the panel. Uh, you can turn your camera on and introduce yourself. Can you guys see me okay? Well, how you guys, how you guys doing? My name is Micah. Um, it's pronounced Micah, not Mika, just so you guys know. Just putting that out there because people do get my name mixed up. Um, I'm a producer from um, Hillside, New Jersey. Well, not just a producer. I make all types of music. I make uh, rap. I make beats. I sing, I dance, basically anything that comes to music, I do. And uh, basically the root of my music comes from my past. Like the pain that I suffered in my past, that's what I influenced in my music. Um, I've been producing since I was in sixth grade and I haven't felt from it since. Um, every day I just try to find a new way to grow and grasp onto uh, new tactics and new stuff to work on. So. Uh, Awesome. Well, I look forward to hearing more about that. So um, we're doing Two Truths and a Lie. We are currently on Vera, uh, on Vera's um, statements here. So do you have anything else before we move on to the next person? Nope. I just, I, I don't remember who's left. <laughs> Who hasn't gone? Okay. I think Jordan and obviously uh, Mika has not gone either. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was Jordan. So Jordan, you can go. It's Mika or Mike, I know you specified, but then I was just like, it's Micah. Micah. Okay. I was like, you said Mika, and I was like, okay. <laughs> and then my brain just like registered the wrong one. Okay. So it's Micah like the powder. Cool. Awesome. Okay. So Jordan, you ready to go? Yes. Um, okay. One, I'm part Mexican. Two, I'm a cat owner. And three, one of my favorite shows is The Vampire Diaries. I think you're a cat owner. Say the first two again. The first two? Wait, first off, who's speaking again so I can like swipe over? Jordan. Okay, looking for Jordan. Okay, Jordan with the purple wall. Yes. That is my favorite color, by the way. <laughs> Mine too. I actually think that you're not a cat owner. You're right, I'm not. Oh, wow. So do you own any pets? Yeah, I have a dog. Cool. <laughs> I like I like the reaction of everyone. I have you guys on um, Not Speaker View. I have you on the, the, I don't know, the gallery or whatever. And I loved everyone go, <laughs> Cause they're they're dog owners too. I'm a cat owner, but I respect dog owners. <laughs> Cats are cute too. Of course, I think all animals are awesome. Of course. <laughs> so, Micah, do you want to go? Yeah, I'll go. Um, my spirit animal is a monkey. Um. I have uh, a twin brother and I like to go to the zoo. You don't like going to the zoo. I've only been since I was six, so that is correct. Chichao's up in here calling everybody out. <laughs> um, so I guess that leaves me. Oh wait, no. We could go. Somebody else got to go, so I uh, um, so I can get them. You know, I just came in. So I got to get at least one point. Okay, so I'm the last person, right? Has everybody else gone? Give me a thumbs up if you've gone. Okay, awesome. So um, mine are I've seen Wicked twice on Broadway. I don't like to wear sweatpants in public, and I have an older brother. 
I can't be the sweatpants because everybody loves wearing sweatpants. Mm. I think you've seen Wicked more than once. I mean, more than twice. I've actually only seen it twice, but I won the lottery for both. Um, what? Yeah. I've been extraordinarily lucky with all of my Broadway shows I've seen. I have not... I've not paid retail for any of them except for yeah no I haven't paid retail for any of them except for Oklahoma which was bought for me for my birthday I I, I love musical theater but I am a thrifty music musical theater sprinkle <laughs> some of your luck over here I get some luck please <laughs> right um and I have an older brother but I do not like to wear sweatpants in public there's just something I respect other people who do it but I do not like it I don't know. I just feel like if I wear them, I'm like not trying hard enough. I don't know. It's like a weird complex I have, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So with that, does anybody have any uh, thing to say before we move on to some questions? Um, I do. I wasn't here uh, anybody else's introduction. So um, can I at least get like a little synopsis on what everybody does per se? Absolutely. So we got to recap that properly for Facebook anyway. So we're going to do the, um, we're going to do the meet, <laughs> the Micah and Facebook recap. Let's do it. Okay. So let's go through. Um, I'm Jocelyn Jeffries. I am a host for various things uh, for Arts and J. I'm an intern as well. And I do filmmaking. All right. So I'm T. Chow. I am an intern at I am a marketing intern, sorry, <laughs> marketing intern at Arts Ed NJ. And I'm a senior at Band High School and I do musical theater. I guess I'll go next. My okay. name is, and um, I'm a very uh, virtuous person. Let's just say that I do a lot of stuff. Okay, cool. Jordan, do you wanna go next? I'm Jordan. I'm a junior at Friends High School and I'm a dancer. Okay. Um, Jasmine, you want to go next? My name is Jasmine Camille. I'm a TV and film major at Howard University and I'm a writer and spoken word artist. Awesome. Lauren, you want to go next? I'm Lauren James. I go to BCIT. I do all kinds of things, acting and the dancing and all the whole thing. Um, and I just, uh, that's me. That's my life. Hey, Kiara. I'm Kiara Gould. I'm in 12th grade at Bayonne High School and I do musical theater. Okay, Vera. I'm a junior at Rancocas Valley Regional High School, and I um, do a little bit of everything. Not really set in stone on one thing. I just kind of go all over the place. Awesome. And then last, but definitely not least, Zaria. Yeah. Hello, my name is Zaria Keith. Um, I'm a junior in Bayonne High School, and I do musical theater. Awesome. So our first uh, regular questions, the like interview questions, discussion questions, uh, whatever you would like to uh, label them as, will be asked by Tu Chao. <laughs> okay, so to start this off, this is a little fun one, or however you would interpret it, but if 2020 was a song, what would it be? Yeah, yeah whoever can, you guys can, we can just start. <laughs> All right. If 2020 was a song, it would be about sickness, death, more death, and a lot of crazy people. Any specific song in mind? Oh, a specific song in mind? Um, Jesus, take the wheel. Sorry, I love that one. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so basically the first song that came to my mind was Cry Me a River by Justin Timberlake. Wow. <laughs> 
Okay. Okay, Lauren, you you um unmuted. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I, I kind of thought about Retrograde by James Blake, which is kind of an obscure one. It's very. It feels very foreboding, and it's a little mournful. Um, and the lyrics they're kind of like you're being you're like suddenly hit with a new experience, and there's all these hurdles, and you're kind of lost. And so it's like kind of the feeling I guess that 2020 has as a song. <laughs> Um, Vera? Um, I don't have a song because I personally don't listen to the artist, but I feel like 2020 was a song made by a hundred gex. <laughs> I, I feel like he most definitely made a song about 2020 because it's so crazy. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't know what song because I don't listen to him, but like it's definitely, it definitely gives off a hundred gex vibe type of, <laughs> type of thing. I, 100 Gex. I just, I can't even start with 100 Gex. I, I can't, you can't listen to it. I don't know how people listen to it. It's like, it's just static, which is what I would have jokingly said about 2020, that it is just, it's just been static, you know, like when, yeah, it just feels static. But um, I guess in actual song form, the song which is stuck in my head right now is Lemon Boy by Cave Town. And I feel like it has like, I don't know, I feel like it fits, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> I had to go through my Spotify playlist. Eh, Spotify playlist. Um, but the first thing that came to mind was the world turned upside down from Hamilton. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Jasmine, you have something to add? <laughs> I was thinking maybe Skyfall by Adele, because it just feels like everything's going. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let's see here. So did everyone answer? I think Jordan didn't answer. Um, my song would probably be We're All in This Together from High School Musical. <laughs> it up. I like that a lot. Um, so the next question is, how did you start making art and why do you make art? So with the, with, with these questions, it's super open forum. You can just start speaking whenever and super casual. Okay. Okay. Um, I think for me, I started doing art when I was really young, just sort of writing in theater and, you know, all the things that they do in school and ballet and such. Um, but the reason that I pursue it now and I still do art is just because it's such a release, you know? It's really a healing tool that helps you just get rid of all the stuff that's been piling up. And this year has been particularly so hard that you definitely need a space to just sort of let go of all the stuff you've been carrying. And so art definitely gives me the space to do that as well as connect with different people and have really great opportunities to just further what I want to do in life. That's awesome. Uh, I guess I'll go next. So um, originally, it started off as a joke, you know, I um, I was like about, I guess I would say like five or six and I was living with my grandmother and one of my like biggest influences at the time was Michael Jackson. So I would uh, be in the living room singing Michael Jackson, dancing or whatever. And then when Michael Jackson died, I was like, somebody got to carry on his legacy. Why not it be me? And that basically started the, uh, it started the music aspect, but it, didn't give it a reason why 
And most people look at music as words that make you rich. No, I look at music as a representation of my heart. So at the time, mind you, I'm a very tall person. I'm just going to put this out there. I'm six five. So just so you guys know, <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to put that out there. My uh, brother is the same height. <laughs> why? But we got to get up. So um, he I basically um, I was going through a hard time. You know, um, I didn't grow up with my father and I was kind of going through the changes of life. Um, I was being bullied a lot because I was just different. I was a different person. I'm just a weirdo in my head. Don't mind me. But anyway, um, I was just trying to find the outlet. And so I didn't really look at music at first. At first, I was looking at magic because, you know, I wanted to like make people disappear. And um, that wasn't working. So I started like looking for more reasons. And then the people from the music shop, I don't know if you guys know what that's at. I think it's in Paramus, one of the, somewhere. It's called the music shop anyway. And they came to our school and they talked to us about um, different instruments and that we could use them to rent and we would use them in school. So my instant thought was, I'm about to do this. And they gave us the little package to, um, to fill out, to do uh, whatever instrument that we wanted. And I chose the saxophone and I started off there. And ever since that day, I feel like I made the best decision of my life because it gives me a way to flow and it gives me a way to block out all the negative energy and also protect my heart. Would you say that art is magic? Art is magic because you can create nothing. No, you can create something out of nothing. So that's basically like a reappearing act to me. You feel me? Absolutely. That's something that my dad always comments about with, with things. They're like, there was nothing there. Now there's a whole idea. <laughs> uh, when I was younger, I think it was a lot of, for me, it was also music. I used to sing a lot. I still sing. And I still like do lessons and stuff, uh, which I started recently. And I did dance too, because I just liked moving. I liked the movement of it. And then acting was like the last one that I got formal training for. But it really, to me, it was the one where it was like, I'm working at this, I'm seeing growth and I love doing it. So I think it's kind of the one where I was like, oh, I can do this professionally. I was going to do musical theater professionally, but for me, there was like, sort of this like heaviness there of like all this expectation from me as a kid and everything I thought I was gonna end up being. And so for me, I was like, I got really into writing my own stuff and like filming stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'm not like super where I wanna be hundred percent, but I really got into storytelling and just collaborative storytelling. Um, I'm super into like role-playing games, like nerdy kind of stuff like that. But the appeal to me isn't like rolling dice, adding numbers, anything like that. It's telling a story with your friends that has everything you want to see. Because I watch a lot of TV, I watch a lot of content, and you're constantly, especially as a person of color or anything like that, what you see on like TV is not they don't see you don't see stories representing yourself and if you do it's like oh this character is tortured they're not worthy of love or they end up alone like all their friends are off you know they get married they have this fairy tale wedding they have kids and the person of color character it just doesn't get that you know what i mean they don't get the full story or they're a side note or they're just an idea they're not a full person so sorry for me uh telling stories like and making them so that everyone can be included is kind of my like passion. It's just my like main thing. So going into college, that's kind of what I want to do is like acting a film minor and just like screenwriting and just like make stories that like all of us can be included in. So yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a really amazing goal and, and a mission. So I, I commend you on that. <laughs> really quick. Have you ever heard of a series called Happily Ever After, a story for every child? I don't think many of us have, but tell us about it, please. 
Oh, I would love to. It is. It was an old series on HBO where they would tell stories um, with children of different color, like people of color telling children's stories. So they would have Goldilocks, they had Cinderella, they had Thumbelina, like they had so many stories and they would purposely make the characters children of color. And the title was purposely called Happily Ever After Fairy Tales for Every Child. And I used to watch that a lot when I was younger. And like, so it was normal for me to see like little black characters on screen or little Spanish kids on the television when that show would come on. But then after that, I wouldn't see that. So when it stopped airing, I got really upset, but you know. So this is more a branch off question. What are some ideas from this, this hive mind of beautiful brains we have here for, um, for including more, more diversity, more representation of, of not only race, but also sexuality and, and all of it. What is a way to include more representation? Um, well, funny enough, my theater class had talked about this like a week or so ago. We spoke about how people like us going out into the world and making ourselves known is very good for ourselves as well as for children that will most likely look up to us because we can be that person we always wanted for ourselves. And so when we're able to go out and become that person and become people like Billy Porter or you know George Salazar, big names and stuff like that, it's a big deal because you see yourself in these people and you're just like, oh my gosh, if they can do it, and I mostly can do it. And it's definitely needed in our future. I feel like from a behind the scenes standpoint, a lot of the writers I admire or creators I admire in terms of storytelling, they focus on making media representative of, of people. Because I feel like sometimes people think of being in like inclusion and diversity as like a thing they need to do to get points. You know what I mean? They don't think of it as like a way to tell a realistic story. They're like, oh, I'm gonna put these people in just so people wanna watch my thing. And like, and that's like so inauthentic and just bad and awful. And there's a great show called Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. It's on Netflix. I'm always promoting the show because they write storylines where they're sort of there's a lot of people of color. They're all very well-developed characters. Um, they focus a lot on mental health and really like fully, they like got writers who knew about that to write those storylines instead of trying to write a storyline for something you like haven't lived through. You know, you get those people with those experiences, you help tell the story and you make it more like, oh, like if I lived in this place, what are the people I would see? Instead of being like, oh, I'm going to put in these people that are like, there just to be there. I'm creating characters that make sense in the world I'm making that are full characters that are not just ideas. And that kind of stuff just really, to me, I really love because I don't think you have to be, you shouldn't have to be a person of color to prioritize people of color. You know, you should just be writing a story that makes sense, a story. Cause all of us, like this is the room that of people that are here, right? And if it was like some CW show, it would be like a group of all white people and one person of color, you know what I mean? So it's like writing what it is instead of making it, I guess, what is considered to be attractive, which is just so messed up. Uh, but I could talk forever, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> it's totally understandable. It's a really fascinating topic. Um, there's something that I studied. I, I watch a lot of content about making content. It seems like you do as well. I'm, I'm, I imagine the rest of us do for our specific fields. But um, there's an there's a idea of happens to be and is. So it's specifically given to LGBTQ representation, but it's happens to be gay versus is gay, you know? And it, and it happens to be Black, but actually is Black. And it's things where it's like, you can't project to have a full written character, a full human being on the screen and, and in the story, you have to give them a reason, like, like not like 
them being the way they are, them having their ethnicity or having their sexuality or whatever, being a woman, you know, whatever, has affected their life in some way or another. It may not be like what they fight for every single day, but it is what they fight for every single day in an unconscious way, if not conscious. And that's something that I feel like a lot of people when they're doing representation, like forget, they're like, okay, so here's this cast of characters. This one's black, this one's in a wheelchair and this one's a woman. Cool, so let's start, you know? And it's not round, it's not, you know, it's not fulfilling. I, I saw Jordan start to unmic, so I'm sorry for uh, cutting you off. Yeah, I was just gonna say that in the dance community, there used to be this stigma that you had to look a certain way and you have to have a certain body and certain hair in order to you know, get a job or be successful. And I'm just really glad that now we live in a time where through dancing, we could portray different stories and it's so much more than movement because now with a lot more recognition of the issues that go on, whether it's surrounding race or gender, there's a lot of education um, through dancing. So we could dance about different biases, discrimination, inclusivity. And I think it's really good that we're able to kind of make dance a little more meaningful now, as opposed to something that was only applicable to a certain group of people. Absolutely. So we don't have to be the only ones asking questions as well, guys. If you have questions for various people or just for the group, please share. This is this is a discussion. This is just a it's a group hangout where we discuss our loves. So um, moving to arts education, I think I think it'd be really like an awesome idea to stick to diversity and that sort of conversation. If if that sounds good to you guys, um, what are some things that you've noticed with like with diversity in schools and, and, and who's casted in what and that sort of thing? Uh, I'll answer that one. Um, so not just diversity in school, but just diversity of the world in general. There's more of a wider outlook on racial equality, but also the racial equality in our entertainment systems and in our arts. Um, most of the time people try to say, oh, if you're not black, you can't rap, you feel me? Oh, if you're not white, then why are you uh, picking up an instrument? Come on, like, that's all like in the past. I picked up my instrument because of what I went through, not because of what you went through. You feel me? Like, let's say for instance, a, a writer, um, Dr. Seuss, right? You never heard Dr. Seuss say, oh, a black person can't write a book. So why would you say that? At the end of the day, it's just, it, it just depends on your talent. Like I've been overlooked so many times. I was actually, I actually auditioned for uh, the Lion King on Broadway. And they said, because I was too tall, I couldn't, I couldn't play the part. Um, and it was the bad because I was actually one of the most qualified people in the room. And it kind of, it, it broke me, but it also pushed me to be greater because now I just look at it as my hit list. My hit list isn't a hit list of people to kill. My hit list is the people to prove wrong. Just, I'm just letting that be known because I, I, I don't want I want nobody to think that I kill people. So, um, but yeah, like with the diversity of music, now it's not just a so-called thing of oh he's black he's not he's not good at what he does. It's oh his words don't his words don't kind of like match. They're not on on beat. Uh, there's a little bit to critique with this art. You feel me? But it's it's more open now. And I'm glad it's that way because if I feel like if it, if things were the same way they were before, we wouldn't be where we are today. In the art, it does anything discriminatory because that's not what it is. It's just that like he'll see me as a certain type and my friend is a certain type, and we'll be like, but I can do this or I could do that. And like sometimes we'll be like he said to me he was like I felt like you should have gotten that role and then he was like I like I got this one thing and I was like I didn't think I was ready for it I felt like he like he said I was gonna play one thing like a little tiny part and he gave me the lead role and he was like it was just so weird so I think there's like sometimes and I've also experienced this on the side of creating things you get an idea in your head of like oh 
this is what I'm doing this show or I'm writing this script and it's going to look like this and my characters that are playing it are going to be like this but like your actors can surprise you so I think in terms of casting when we're trying to cast things and create things it's important to not get these preconceived notions I think they can really block what we're making and what like we make as a, as as artists because me and my friend were like wow that's so weird that like all of us were kind of feeling one particular way like this is not how I thought it was gonna go and like oh I don't think this is my type at all he was like he had me as this like cool hot guy who can do whatever he wants and he's like that's not me <laughs> like I'm not that guy and I was like I was like I was like, I mean, don't be too hard on yourself, but I, I get what you're where like, cause we know ourselves, I think more than anyone else can. So when someone tries to shoehorn you into a type, you're kind of just like, well, that's not my thing. So I guess that was kind of what I thought of when you brought up sort of like the productions and stuff like that. I don't know if I'm getting to the heart of the question, but that's kind of what my brain went. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, Vera, please go. Oh, okay. Um... Sorry, but um, in my school, they're very open about how they typecast and everything. Like, they don't explicitly say that, oh, we're typecasting, but like everybody knows that they typecast. And also one of the first things we learn in theater prep and the theater prep teacher is the person who directs uh, um, like the plays and the musicals is uh, what is your uh, typecast and everything. So it's very obvious on like uh, who gets what parts and stuff. And sometimes that can be like a little disheartening because you know that like sometimes you don't have a chance, especially because there are favored students or um, once you're typecasted as one thing, you only get that one thing for the rest of the four years you're there in high school. So it's really difficult to um, like wanting to branch out and doing other things, especially when you're stuck in this little box that they expect you to be in everything. So like, I feel like that is something that should change and like they should like be more open-minded about what students can actually do and like um, what they can bring to the table and everything instead of keeping them in like one tiny little box for their whole four years, which is like when you're supposed to grow and do the most, but they're just keeping you in this one little tiny box where you can't do anything. Yeah. it's 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 expediency not like not growth they're thinking okay so this person did this character okay so that's the person they'll be for the rest of their time here because i don't oh well, why bother trying to figure out something else this person can do when this other person does this character great and you know so it's simple uh, jasmine i know has specific thoughts about casting because we went to the same high school and i've, I've watched her get casted in things and not get casted in things and and things which she definitely deserved because she is she may say that she's not a good singer but she is she's a very good singer so um jasmine do you want to make some comments about it do you have any thoughts sure um so yeah i went to jo i went to high school with jocelyn um and i'm in college now and casting for me definitely was a bit difficult um the school that I went to and especially like the program that I was in there wasn't a lot of like females that looked like me or like people in general that looked like me I could honestly count the amounts of black people in my grade that did performing arts like on a hand <laughs> and so when it came to casting and stuff it was very difficult because why I feel as though I have a lot of talent in the different areas I was always the the funny supporting character the loud supporting character you know the one who's just loud and sassy and all those things and you know that's a part of who I am but I'm also very down to earth I can be very dramatic I have a lot more depth to me and I feel like sometimes theater arts, especially within like a high school setting where, you know, we're trying to do it as professionally as possible, but we only have little resources and such, they sort of look at you from a surface level. And I think the bigger problem at hand is not just about how they label you, 
but how eventually, because you hear it so much, you start to label yourself that way also. And so over and over again, people were telling me that I'm the I'm the best friend, I'm the funny, sassy black girl. And eventually that's just sort of what I thought I was. I thought that's what I was able to do. I stopped auditioning for roles that didn't have, you know, sassy, snappy, big haired black girl in the title. Cause I just thought that th that's who I'm supposed to be. And I feel like that's really what blocked me a lot through high school because I just constantly let what other people thought about me really get to me and sort of determine what I was able to do. And so now I'm going to uh, college um, and at my university, there's a lot more diversity and a lot more people who look like me. And I'm starting to realize that like the depth that I have is only going to be determined by myself. And I can't really let other people decide what characters I can play, what I can write, what I can do. And that's really just sort of helped me branch out and start creating my own work instead of waiting for someone else to give me a seat at their table. And that's definitely what I would advise everyone who feels like that for any reason, whether it's because of what you look like, what you sound like, your height, your age, your color, your weight, whatever. If someone is not giving you a seat, you have to just make your own table basically because art is something that's always changing. It's always evolving. It always needs new people. And there's no one else in the world that is like you. And you just need to remember that. So forget what everybody else is saying. You're unique, you're special and you guys got this. Absolutely. So Chi Chao, I know that you have you have a you have a question boiling. <laughs> <laughs> it's not re really a question, but I kind of want to bounce off of what Jasmine said. Um, I know there's a lot, especially if you're going to um, the entertainment business, just any type of entertainment, the filmmaking, uh, performing arts, dance, anything like that. Um, they ha it's there's the stigma where you have to be you have to look a certain way, you have to be. A certain something you have to be a certain race you have to have straight hair curly hair wavy hair you have to stay within like a range of weight or something so I've been hearing that a lot I'm pretty sure everyone at some point has heard some part of the stigma in their life and it's been like implemented in their brain that they have to follow this in order to be something in order to just achieve what they want even if it's something small so I've always had like the sti that stigma stuck in my head saying like, oh, I need to really change the way how I look. I need to be able to sing a soprano when really I could only hit the alto notes or even the tenor notes. So um, kind of what Jasmine said, my advice is just to really just be yourself and kind of just strive for what you want. If you don't get it okay don't don't really brush it off as like a whatever okay kind of take it and be like okay that's not what this person's looking for but I know there's someone else who's looking for what I have I could always improve on the qualities that I have and even probably build upon it and get some of those qualities that I never thought I would absolutely we have a question from Facebook um, the question is, how can the students come together and mobilize for the arts with advocacy, with an advocacy message at a state level? And what would your message be? Can I answer that one? Um, so first off, hello, Miss Priscilla from Facebook. Um, a way that we can um, basically have all of our talents, not just recognized, but also, um, how do I say this? But also made more aware. Like there are some students that make, there's, there's a lot of people that I know that make music and nobody knows like what, like what their music is, what's their sound, any of that. And it's really bad because the people that are so-called the, the, the step stone, the stepping stones for music right now, like let's say uh, NLE Choppa, Megan Thee Stallion, like people, like people like that, they don't make the music that gives you uh, 
that feeling, that soul. They just make a song that makes you want to twerk, you feel me? Like, and that hurts because I'm a musician and I don't make music for people to like, you know, I, they could do that if they want to, but like my, my, that's not my main goal. That's everybody else's main goal. And what I want to do is kind of steer away from that. But what we could do to group all of us together is just work together. Like, let's say I make music. I know there's a lot of dancers in here. There's a lot of singers in here. There's a lot of people that make art. That's an album right there in those music videos. Think about it. We have the dancers dancing, the rappers rapping, and the artists can make the covers. And everybody profits off of that. But at the same time, it'll also be sending out a message to those that can, um, how do I say this? It's sending out the message to the people that makes them aware of how we uh, maneuver and how we operate. Absolutely. That that reminds me of just the the undeniable community of art, right? Like that was something I really thought about when we were all in quarantine was that like none of us like stopped. It just like we maybe took like a, a week to kind of be like, OK, oh, uh, OK, you know, like, hold on, guys. But then after that, it, it, it just went back to that flow of community and it became what it is now where we're here you know we're i'm talking to you guys to my computer i'm talking to my computer i'm alone in my room I, I i you know from an outsider perspective i look like a crazy person but you're all doing the same thing and we, we feel connected we're discussing something that's so important and so connecting so we have two comments from um facebook one of them is from dr uh francis uh Shearer. says amazing to hear the use of art as an expression of stories, it is magic, I agree, like we said earlier. Storytelling is an intuitive part of so many cultures. It's a way to pass on values, whether it's color, re resilience, keep it up. And then the other one is from Dennis Argul. And he says, great, great to hear these voices, keep on keeping on everyone. So, um, we could go on to some more uh, questions or we can go to some comments from you guys. Do you want to bring up some things which have been boiling on in your head? I have a question. Yeah, absolutely. Well, while we know everybody in here has a special talent that's dear to their heart, is there anything that you guys do that, um, that sets you aside from everyone else. Because that's the one thing that you need in order to, to like, you know, to go far. You need to stand out from everyone else to show everybody else that you're that person. Um, so do you mean like specifically like our style with, with our art? Yes. Uh, so I can make a comment about that for myself and maybe that can help other people kind of contextualize theirs. For me, I do films and I've been doing films for about three years now. I love it. it it um it when I I like to describe it as falling in love when I discovered that this is my thing. So uh, my specific style is it being very like you know slice of life like sort of like Napoleon Dynamite that sort of thing. But then it's a mix of slice of life and then a little bit of fantasy where it's the beauty of the details. It's the magic of the mundane, you know. And that's the thing which I really love like. I was talking to someone the other day and I was like, um, he asked why I had a blueberry milkshake. And he was like, I've always wondered why blueberries, why blueberry things, why they're purple. And I was like, it's the inside of the blueberry. And I swear there's a point to this. Um, and he, and I was like, have you ever like bit a blueberry and looked at your, looked at the food before, like looked at it and saw like the intricacies of the blueberry. And he was like, no, I've never done that. I'm like, I've done it to a lot of food where I bite it in half. And then I just look at like, how it's built and you think about it, you think about who created this, you think about, you think about like if you were eating pizza, you know, you think about the bread and you think about who did all of this and every single thing in the world is a story. And I think that's just beautiful. And I think the little details are what really drive me. And I know there's other people who have, who have the grand things are what drives them. And, and I just love to hear all those things from you guys. I, I think I already talked about, I guess, telling a story. 
Um, right now, I mean, I went crazy about it, but right now I've been really into writing a role playing game, which is kind of, I've been, I watched, I've been watching them forever and like watching people tell them. And when you're the person who plans the story, like the, the dungeon master, as it's called very dorkily, <laughs> you have to write a full story. You have to help your players come up with characters. You have to sort of make this whole world. You have to figure out what your players are going to think. And that's the crazy part because um, it's like I could plan a whole thing and then they could just walk past the place I want them to go. And they're like, oh, like I could plan. I'd be like, oh, there's this great magical orb. And they'd be like, oh, is there a taco nearby? And I'd be like, hmm. So it's like, for me, it's those like fun moments. And we were playing during Halloween, this like Halloween themed, like everyone's a monster, which is kind of kooky and fun. And they had like, I would present a puzzle and my friend was like, oh, I solved it, but my character just wouldn't have solved it at this point. And so she's like, she's like, how do I? And I'm like, you're gonna get there. She's like, no, I got it, I got it. <laughs> and so it's like fun because I'm the one who has all the secrets. I'm the one who's like, I get to play multiple people and pull different things out of their characters. And they're kind of along for the ride. And they were like, you really like, I forgot who I was for a second there. Like I'm this fictional character now. I'm suddenly a vampire now. We all live in this city. This is real, but it's not, but it just feels, there's something so fulfilling about, like we sat at this table for three hours, our butts hurt. We ate a bunch of pizza. There's a full story now that we made and we have a bunch of inside jokes that no one's gonna understand. And I think that is what doing a play is like that. You know, like when you're in a production doing a musical, you make all those inside jokes. You spend all that time with the cast. You see each other in the hallways and you say something that you two think is funny and everyone's like, well, what are they talking about? <laughs> and that's what the like theater and theatrical creative experience is, is that we've made something together. It's that feeling you've achieved something and it's just, there's barely anything else like it, I think. I totally agree. And I love D&D as well. So don't don't think you're too much of a dork. I love D&D. I have a character and I remember one time, um, <laughs> my, D my, my dungeon master, she's uh, you know, she's not very nice to us. So she was like straight up about to kill off my love interest. And I was like, so like, I was almost in tears. I was like, so engaged. And that's what it is. It's, it's, it's loving your character and loving your story. But, you know, that's that. Um, <laughs> we have a couple questions coming in from Facebook. We also have a couple comments. I'm going to read the comments. And then um, I can come back to you guys for if you want to continue on with that, what, what sparks your, your love and, and your imagination. But from uh, Jennifer Huckleberry, she says, you're all lovely. Keep chasing your fashions. And hi, Jocelyn. She's Jasmine, Jasmine's former uh, musical director and theater teacher and my, I guess, current, even though I don't take theater classes. So cool. And then the other comment is from Lori Alexander. And she says, so I saw I, that, I saw that from Zari. I think she's your, your coach or your director. Um, <laughs> oh, and it looks like Chi Chow as well. Um, so she said, so proud young artist pushing the conversation forward and advocating for the arts. So with that, with those comments, are there, does anybody else really want to talk about the, the things which which sparks their imagination? Arlo. Oh man. I have a childish imagination. I have a very big childish imagination and it also gets me in trouble, but you know, it, it helps me be creative because once you're an adult, people always look at stuff like, um, hold on, I gotta charge my charger in. Let me put my charger in. All right. So the one thing that people tell me is like, oh, you're too childish. Oh, you're um, you're not going to make it far with that type of mindset. But in the world that we live in today, your creativity is all you have. Your imagination is all you have because you can't depend on somebody else to give you that star idea. And then once they give you that star idea, then they want credit for it. Now, giving credit is not a bad thing, but what, how I'm looking at it is, I don't like using somebody else's stuff. Like in the producer world, we have these things called loops, which is basically like instruments that um, like keep playing through. 
So it just loops over and over and over again. Basically, like if you listen to like uh the baby, you know how it goes. Mm, 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 mm. And then it loops again and it just keeps going and going and going. That's a loop. I'm sorry, I had to explain it. But um people buy these, people get these loops, and then there's a whole bunch of stuff behind it. It's like you gotta buy buy the loop, then there's a license behind it. Then once you make the beat, you gotta um send it to the person that made that made the loop so that they can uh basically approve it and basically a song won't get copyrighted and stuff and then you could profit off your song it is just a whole bunch when you can just basically sit there and use your mind and make something of your own and then profit off it by yourself without having to give anything up to anybody else that's how you grow by using your own mind not somebody else's and so i had to go into that mindset because when they said that i was childish i was like well i can use childish type uh melodies like a, a melody for a child and um basically turn it into something greater so i'm just going to give you guys a quick example here um i don't know if you guys been i know we have been in the uh, the zoom meeting and whatever but i've been actually working on something like in the mist and so i just want to show you guys real quick um this is what it sounds like Once you get gradually, like once you get back, then you can start building around it. Eight away patterns. Claps. Kicks. And hi-hat patterns. It all comes together, right? But what I'm basically was trying to say is, if you don't have that imagination and that creativity, you're not going to go anywhere because that's what art is. Art is creativity. What you can create out of your own headspace and put it into physical form. So once you put it into the physical form, now it's what can what else can I do with it? And that's where the creativity keeps building and building. You're never actually done with one thing. Like Van Gogh. Let's say when he painted, uh, I believe it's Starry Nights. I don't know if that was Van Gogh or not, but let's say Starry Nights, right? He could have added fireworks. He could have added, um, instead of putting moons, he could have just left it blank. He could have left the sky dark, but he didn't. But at the same time, there's other possibilities that he could have added onto it that he did. And that's the one thing about uh, music that I fear for is that there's something that we can put on it, but once we already put it out, we can't bring it back in and fix it and then put it back out. But just to like, just to wrap things up, your creativity is what's going to get you through the breaking point. That's what's going to get you through the door. All your skills, all your, um, your, your attributes and all that other stuff, that is just going to make sure that you can project it, but your creativity is what starts it. And if you don't have that creativity, you're not going to go anywhere. I, I can I can agree with with that um, to a certain extent, of course, because I believe that um, community is super, super important. And I know I'm someone who like has trouble trusting other people to get work done the way I want it to be. But it's about it's a. Yeah, I, I saw a couple other people nodding their head that they're the same way. I, I feel like every artist to a certain extent is like, OK, so I don't trust anybody else to do anything ever right i'm just gonna do it myself and then it'll be perfect but as a director and as a writer i've realized i am not i know how to use music but i don't know how to make it and i know how to use art and and shots but i don't really know i don't have the visual drawing sense that a lot of other people have and there's people who are so passionate about it who burn for music you know and who burn for for drawing and i i just i don't have that and so i've been working on and it seems like you guys have been as well working on trusting other people to to work with you and and to to balance your art because in the end it's it's all about community and it's all about making something that will affect everyone. So uh, there's two more questions from the audience. And then we have a final question, which goes into each of you guys specifically and about where you've been and where you want to go. 
Um, so one of the questions is, um, what are, it's from uh, Doc, France, uh, Doc Francis Shearer. What are a couple ways that youth can use art to bring hope into communities that are now under siege? Spread the word to other youth who feel voiceless. Um, well, the easiest way is social media, of course. <laughs> like, you know, it's easy to post something quick and then people see it and they spread it around. So that's one of the easiest ways. But if it's like a group setting where everyone has to work together, that's something like <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, fix my brain so I can explain this better. But an easy example is with my thespian group, us going together and doing these, like our recent fundraiser, that was a big deal for us because we went out of our way to go find an organization with Lovely Two Chow, found an organization, brought it back to us. And then as a whole, the thespian went out of their way to post on social media, talk to family members and, you know, just speak around our community so that we were able to go and collect food for this organization. And it's that type of, you know, community that's really helpful because we're helping others while also building within ourselves because we're building trust, we're, bu we're building trust, we're building friendships, we're building closeness between each other, as well as helping everyone around us all at once. Um, another way is I'm not personally a part of it because I don't tend to um, like participate in the plays. I mostly just do the musical uh, theater and like the musicals and everything. But there also are events that you could do in a like socially distanced fashion and like outside and everything like our play. This is the first time our play is ever going to be outside this year so that everybody can participate and still be a part and watch uh, the plays that we do every single year. We do every we do one play and one musical every single year. And it was sad knowing that we couldn't, um, we actually was able to fit in both of our musicals and plays last year because we, we did a little early. Um, but it was, it, would, it was a sad thought to think that we might have not been able to do it this year um, because everything is going on. So other than social media, there's like social media, of course, to like boost everything, but there are also ways that you could find a big open space to like uh, still do art and um, like find ways around these like technical difficulties that we all seem to be having right now. Absolutely. So we have one more question from the Q&A. It's from Miss Lori Alexander. She says, she asks, what do you think your biggest obstacle obstacle will be as you pursue a career in the arts? I, I can answer that one. And this is pretty much based off experience, but the hardest part is networking actually. And I say that because you can say out your mouth that, oh, I think you're tough. I think you're, you're good at what you do. I wanna work with you. And then they just throw it all away. They don't say nothing to you without without a without a doubt um i've actually had this happen to me many times with like a lot of artists and give it like believe me or not they're all blue check artists they're all people that have uh at least like they, they they're known like i've tried to work with gilly the king casanova um i've tried to work with um i don't know if you guys don't know him but he's um two chains producer for one of his albums it was rapper go to the league and so I went, I, I performed in Hoboken and I did, I did the show and I actually did pretty good for being the youngest person to be performing. I, it was like, everybody there was like an adult. Uh, and I was like the only person that was 16 that was performing. I'm 17 now. And it kind of like, it kind of threw me off in a sense because I did, they were telling me, oh, you're dope. You're, you're doing great. I want to work with you this down the third. The person that was running the show wanted to manage me. And it was kind of it was kind of horrible because once the corona kicked in, it was like everybody just washed it like they wiped their hands with me. To the point where, at first I was like, you know what, 
no, I'm not doing music no more. That just, that just makes me think that I'm not worth it. But then I was like, no, I'm just going to prove them wrong. And so in that sense, that's what everybody else has to do. Like with net, with networking, they'll, they'll tell you, oh, this is great. We're going to do this for you. We're going to do that for you. And then they won't say a word to you. So that's basically like one of the hardest parts because you, you think that you're somewhere and then it turns out to be something else. You're going to be like a step under that. But that also gives you the potential to grow, go farther. And it gives you the potential to grow. And then once you make it and then they'd be like, oh, yeah, I was supposed to work with him. I never did. Yeah, because that's your fault. I think this is a super important question. So I'd like to hear like a couple more people talk about it. I uh, also think another thing is um, not only is like, do you like some people think I like uh, not that you have to prove yourself to others, but also I think it's hard to like prove to yourself that you're good enough and you have to get past that mind limit that like, oh, I'll never be good enough or I could do so much better than this especially um, because, you know, I'm going to college soon and I need a portfolio and everything and making portfolios are hard and like knowing like what's your best art and like uh, what can I present to these people who are going to judge me to see whether or not I'm going to get into like my future college and everything and I think it's also like having to not be so hard on yourself and realize that like you are good enough and of course you can always do better but I think you should also like appreciate the talents that you have like right here and now and I think that's like one of the hardest things to get by is just your own mental block of either procrastination or like not thinking you're good enough and just like everything in general it's just getting past your own mind to really pursue your future career and like doing what you want to do for the rest of your life or for however, however long to make you like truly happy and everything. Um, I, no, I, I just totally agree. Chuchal, yeah? Oh, no, no, continue, continue. <laughs> no, no, that's what I was going to say. I said I totally agree. And I, I think it really is about, I've had that where Jasmine knows I've had that. I've texted her at 4 a.m. and been like, I'm just not, I'm never going to do it, you know? <laughs> and <laughs> But it, it, you get that. It hits you. You think, oh, you know, for specifically for me, for filmmaking, I'm like, I rewatch my films and I'm like, okay, that hair is out of place. How did I not see that on set? I'm terrible, you know? But it, it's it's not really like that. It's about improving and working and working on yourself because with certain, with certain things, I feel like this has all happened with you guys. You've had that spark. You've had that feeling where you're like, this is the right thing for me. And so you just got to believe that. You have to believe that so hard and that's a really hard thing to do but you have to because if you don't if you don't love what you're doing if you don't pursue it with your entire body with your entire force with all your time then it is uh, your chances of making it are just getting slimmer and slimmer so it has to be something you love it has to be something that drives you in this field in this in, in art in general absolutely i also believe that um, besides the mental aspect of how much you love it, how much you're going to pursue, how much effort you're going to put in to pursue what you want to do. I also believe that one of the biggest obstacles is marketing, like not just marketing yourself to the other. <laughs> I saw that <laughs> to um, to like other to Broadway shows, to your audition, to the judges. It's also how you market yourself in your mind. If you keep thinking that, oh, I'm not able to reach up to that standard bar then that's how you're marketing yourself to the other judges that's how you're portraying yourself in your mind and that's going to show in what you're performing what you're doing what you're putting out there so I think it's really important to be able to think of yourself and market yourself in your own mind first as something big something that you know you can achieve and that will prevail in what you're doing Absolutely. So I know Jasmine has some very specific thoughts about this. And then after that, unless anyone has um, anything they'd like to add, um, we can move on to our last question, which will be highlighting each person and then we'll be closing down the stream. Um, but Jasmine, please share your thoughts because I remember you telling me them and them being really inspirational for me. <laughs> okay, well, it's sort of a 
combination of what everyone said, um, especially marketing. Uh, the way that I see it is that people see you the way you see you in a sense. And so if I tell people that, you know, I'm kind of good, I'm pretty okay, then they're going to think, okay, she's kind of good, she's pretty okay. And I feel like if you believe in yourself first, that will start pushing other people to believe in you. And something that I'm really steadfast on that I uh, do a lot for myself is I never call myself aspiring anything like ever. I never say I'm an aspiring writer or a soon to be this or I never do that. I say I'm a writer, I'm an artist, I make film movies, I'm an actor. I never say that I'm going to do something because I need to constantly reaffirm to myself that this is what I am, this is what I'm doing. Because if you keep telling yourself you're chasing your dream, you're going to find your dream, you're gonna get it, you're gonna get it, then you're gonna miss when it happens right in front of you. And I think that's such an important thing so of course there's bigger goals out there that I'm still reaching for, but if you ask me who I am, I can tell you with a full heart and full of confidence exactly who I am. And it's because of that confidence that I've been able to get into the rooms that I have and speak to different companies such as I have. And I think that's really important. It's really about confidence. And I know confidence is a really, uh, difficult subjects sometimes even for myself and so one thing that I learned especially in high school is that it's not always really about the substance but how you portray it and what I mean by that is not to be hollow and not to care about your art but to sort of fake it till you make it like an example for that is as a spoken word artist, you know, I'm on stage in front of like thousands of people. <laughs> and sometimes it is so nerve wracking, like to just see like hundreds of millions of people in front of you. And the thing that always helps me is to just be overly confident about it, be overly confident in what I say, the way I speak, the way I dress, the way that I portray myself. Because if you, tell yourself that you're confident then you know somewhere down the line you're gonna feel it and that confidence is what's going to get you indoors that confidence is what's going to get people to remember you because even if all your words don't come out right even if there's a hair out of place people are not going to remember that they're going to remember what you made them feel and so focus on that focus on the feelings focus on the the colors, the, the things that people are gonna take in their hearts and everything else will fall into place. <sighs> awesome. Okay, so, <laughs> um, Ticha, would you like to get us to our last activity? Yes, of course. So adding on to the motivational, inspirational stories that we have, um, we would love if everyone can share their own story of how they kind of got into the arts and how, and basically use a hashtag because of arts ed. <laughs> because of arts ed, how, how did it change your life? So we're gonna go through each person. This is gonna be a little bit, it's gonna be structured like it was in the beginning. We're gonna go through each person and we're gonna give everyone about a minute to two to kind of really discuss like where how they've gotten to where they are and kind of chart what their path has been and where they what their path will be so um i think we could do you think we should do it like you pass it on to the next person who and then it's like how we did that yeah okay cool so um to chow you you pick a person or you go first i think go first <laughs> awesome so for me I never really ventured much into the arts when I was younger. Yes, I did join chorus, choir, but I never, I kind of just did it just because it was kind of there, you know, I had time. Why not spend it doing something? So when I got to high school, I moved to New Jersey from Florida and 
I lived down in Florida for like 10 years. So when I finally moved up here, I was kind of like, mm, what do I do with my life now? <laughs> I have nothing else to do. So when we got, when I got to high school, I took a musical theater class. That was honestly my first um, arts class besides being forced to take music classes or anything like that. And I absolutely fell in love with how everything is combined the singing, dancing and acting. It isn't just specified to like one, you kind of like a jack of all trades sort of. And I auditioned for my first musical, 1776, all girls version. <laughs> and it was the most fun I've ever had in school. And I just loved it so much. I wanted to continue doing it. And I've known myself as more of a musical kind of girl instead of like a straight play. So I did audition for all the musicals that have been happening so far in my school. But I've also taken advice from my theater teacher. She told us that even if you don't want to go audition, you should try and do some other aspects of theater, like stage managing, lighting director, stage crew, any of that and just garner experience. So I kind of took that to heart. And over the past three, almost four years now, I've done a whole bunch of stuff from stage managing to ushering to stage crew and all those quick changes and crazy shenanigans backstage. It, it sounds really cliche, but all of that has really shaped me to be who I am. I'm not just, you know, that girl who's like what do I do with my life now I'm kind of like wow this is what I want to do this is what I'm gonna go into and I'm just gonna keep pushing for it I'm gonna keep going for it until and I won't stop until I've actually reached it and even when I reach it I'm still just gonna keep pushing forward do what I love and keep trying to inspire people around me. that's wonderful so um pick someone new pick another person but I'm, I'm really happy you found your passion. I think I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm gonna feel that way about every single person's little speech. It's just wonderful to see another person, you know, living their dream and like going and living their dream and going to do it. So that's awesome. Uh, pick another person. Let's hear another beautiful story. <laughs> How about Lauren? I think for me, it's a lot of options, and I like that because I think. With musical theater for me, the college track, it's very one way. And I, and it's very intensive and like BFA is, and I like being able to, because I think I'm a person who has so many ideas and so many mediums that I like. I like the idea of learning kind of acting, maybe even acting for film, that kind of thing. And also learning the film production side of things. So if I wanna write for a show, I could do that. If I get an opportunity to be an acting actor on a show, I would love to do that or in film or anything like that. I think for me, it's, there's a lot of opportunities and I like that sensation because I was afraid when I, when I was going for musical theater, I ha always had that thing of not being good enough that I think we always have as actors, but it was almost too, a, for me, it was almost like a crippling feeling. It was like hindering me more than it was helping me. And there is doubt when I'm like, acting always there's always doubt with writing because I'm newer at those kind of things uh the writing side and like the more technical filmy things that I'm still not very good at or still learning but um for me the idea that like oh maybe in three years I'll be doing this or maybe I'll be doing this is like really thrilling to me because I never really was like a hundred percent sure like I want to be on Broadway and I love Broadway and I love seeing shows but like if that's not where I end up and if I'm still doing like something I love or some version of something I love, I think I will be fulfilled in that way. And if I'm able to create something and other people can enjoy it, then I've done what I wanted to do. So for me, it's because, especially since I'm going into college, it's all opportunity. And I, that's really thrilling to me at least. So, yeah. Um, I, oh, do you want me to pass it on? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome though. Um, I'm going to pass it on to Vera. Um, I don't know, man. <laughs> I've kind of thought about it, but it's always just something I've just kind of done. You know, I've never really had like a spark to do it because I'm not really being good at sports. I've never really been good at writing. 
I remember really being good at like science. Don't get me started on math. I cannot do that. <laughs> so I like, I never thought that I could do anything else really. Like I didn't think it was really like another option. So as like time went on, I was like, you know what, this is my thing. This is it right here. <laughs> So it's just further developed as time has gone on and me realizing, oh, like, oh, I don't want to be stuck. Like my biggest fear is being stuck in a nine to five job that I hate for the rest of my life. So like, I'm really pushing for my passions and like definitely forcing myself to really like really focus on art and do like um, kind of do the best of both worlds because I want to go into like psychology and therapy so I'm actually planning on doing like art therapy in the future and everything. So because of that, I really need to push myself to like uh, really be better, uh, be a better artist than I usually am because I'm such a big procrastinator. It's, it's a really big issue for me. And um, as time has gone on, I realized that like, oh my God, this is actually like really what I wanna do in my life. I wanna not only make art, but I wanna help people express their emotions and how they're feeling through art because art has helped me so much to do that myself so why not do the best of both worlds and help both myself but also other people so I think it's just as time has gone on I've realized I'm like yeah this is it this right here this is what I want to do and I'm going to pass it on to Zaria <laughs> okay um I really never saw myself doing theater mostly um growing up I was I'm interested in every you, you cut out a little bit sorry you cut out of that I began to fall in love with special effects and art and all these other things and the funny part is I do not touch base in any of those things except for musical theater because I am not good with all those other fun stuff but I grown to love it which is why I ended up doing like choir from third grade to eighth grade and then once I got to high school I started doing shows I mean I did shows in like eighth grade so that's what caused me to want to come and do it at the high school. And so from there, it was just an open door. It was like, I finally have an idea of what I want to do, or at least give me a start. Because I look at all of this, and when I look at Broadway and stuff like that, I see everything that I loved as a kid. I see the music, I see the makeup effects. I see, you know, just working around the theater, working in the theater, on stage, off stage, up in the, the you know, catwalk, all the other stuff. You are everywhere if you work in the theater. And that's definitely one thing I genuinely love about it, which is why I want to, you know, be in musical theater and do theater when I get older. Because it's just like, it's such a fun experience, no matter what you do, whether you're you know, backstage helping with costumes or in the house watching, because even watching is fun or ushering, which is literally the best thing <laughs> for me. <laughs> but like all that stuff definitely like gives me an idea of what I want to do. Because, you know, I still sometimes feel like I don't know where I'm going in life. But I try and like buckle down and think, okay, what are your favorite things? And what do these little things make you? Because once I start thinking about that, I'm like, oh, I love theater. I love music. I love dancing. I love singing. And then it's just like, okay, that's literally everything you want right there. Boom. Then it's like, oh, okay, now I have an idea. So what can I do with this idea? And that's how I slowly am maneuvering in life right now. And I'm just trying to make a path for myself because I'm still kind of everywhere trying to slowly figure out what do I want to do. So, you know, I've, I've, <laughs> I'm a bit of a mess, but I'm still trying to get it together in the long run. <laughs> I think, I think one of the beautiful and things. Oh. I think I'm going to pass it to, no, no, you can go. 
Okay, I think one of the beautiful things about art is Wait, that oh, there's. The oh. Okay, I think one of the beautiful things about art is that it um. There's so many layers. There's every single type of art that we look at. Every single type of art that we engage with. There's like. 80,000 people behind it, you know, and they're all doing different things which require different parts of your human brain and your human body and your, and just all of it. So I, I think that, I think that not having it all planned out now, of course, you guys are in high school, so it's not like really a big deal, but not having it all planned out is okay when you're going into arts because you don't need to have it all planned out. You can go in and be like, okay, I really like this atmosphere. I'm gonna go find a thing to do in this atmosphere and then you'll be happy because you've picked something you love already and you're just picking, you're just picking the steps to it. Um, so Zaria, who are you going to pass it to? I'm so sorry, it's been so glitchy. Uh, yeah, I figured. Um, I'm gonna pass it to Kiara. Yeah, so when I was younger, I've always wanted to go somewhere in the entertainment industry. Then my love for animals took over. So I was like, I want to be a vet for birds because I have three birds and they've been with me for over 10 years. And I was, I was in elementary school. I'm like, I'm dead set. I'm going to be a veterinarian for birds. There's a term for that, but I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. And, um, <laughs> and I, one day, because in the elementary schools, that's where we choose our first, you know, elective class. So I go into the class and I was like, I, they had to switch me out of a class because they completely got rid of it. So I was like, oh, okay. So I had the choice between hotel management and musical theater. And I was like, um, cause I, hotel, hotel management never piqued my interest. But then the teacher was like, I think it'd be great here. I went the other direction because I was like, listen, I, <laughs> I felt like I was just wasting my talent almost cause I, been singing since I was like young and and anyone in my family can testify to that my three hour long car drives to Atlantic City and back I've always sang annoying my father um and uh, and ooh, I'm, I've lost my train of thought um but yeah I would always sing and from belting in in my bathroom like belting let it go in my bathroom at 12 in the morning with my sister calling my mom to tell me to shut up yeah so I was like, you know, I feel like I'm wasting my talent. Let me just go into musical theater because I sing anyways. And I've always wanted to go into the entertainment industry. And in that class, I was like, oh, wait, I feel like I fit here. So I just continued going with the motions of the class until, you know, I was in 1776 as well. And um, I was like, let me give that show a shot. And I got a really good role for, you know, my first year. And I liked and I loved it. And, you know. And I was like, wait, I think I belong here. And then I just continued doing more and more and more shows. And I'm like completely in love with it now. And now I'm pursuing a BFA in one college. And I don't know what I'm going to do in the other college yet. So I'm still kind of figuring that out. But yeah, I just found my love through like going into classes and just, you know, from my aspirations from when I was younger. Like, I feel like if I did go in the route of veterinary, medicine I wouldn't have loved it as much as I love theater now so I'm kind of glad I found myself and I found like where I could use my talents to its full ability because if I had one went into I think it's called a variant doctor I think that's what it's called the variant doctor if I went into that industry I wouldn't have loved it as much and I would and I would just be another talent wasted absolutely and I think I think recognizing that about yourself and being honest to yourself about it is really important. And I think also be, have, having many different things that you like is, is really valuable too. So pass it to the, um, someone else. Uh, Micah and Jasmine have not gone. I have not gone, but I can not go for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass it on to Jasmine. Okay. <clears throat> um, so basically when I was younger, I wanted to be a singer. Um, I sing a little bit and so I thought that's what I wanted to do and I thought it for different reasons it wasn't because I just love to sing though I, I do is because I thought it was you know the popular thing to do I always knew I wanted to be in entertainment and arts and stuff 
but I thought singing was like the popular thing. It's what would, you know, make me stand out. It's what all the girls are supposed to do. I'm supposed to be a soprano and all these different things. Um, but it wasn't until high school that I sort of realized that, you know, that's not exactly the path I wanted to go down. And so I've always been a writer. I've always had my little journals and my poetry, but writing and poetry specifically aren't very mainstream arts. And so I never thought that that was something that I could pursue as like a, a career career. So it was just something I kept under wraps and I still was singing, if we want to call it that, <laughs> and um, doing things in that area. But around my junior, junior year of high school, I started uh, just auditioning for different things and just sort of putting my art out there, my writing. And so I actually got to perform at the Apollo in 2019 in New York, which was like a super big experience for me. And I won a couple competitions with them. And that's when I started to realize that like, you know, this isn't mainstream, but maybe that's because I'm supposed to make it mainstream. And so I kept pushing that, I kept auditioning for things, joining different teams and such. And, you know, I'm at my dream school right now and I'm pursuing uh, the thing that I thought I wasn't going to be able to pursue. And I've got to work with a lot of really cool companies. Um, the Apollo 17 magazine was fun. Uh, the NAACP, just like a lot of different places. And it really just sort of affirmed for me that if you feel like there's not an area for you, then you have to sort of make that area for you. And so I still sing in my bathroom, but <laughs> writing and stuff is definitely what I love. And I love that I'm finding a space and an area to put that in. And so I'm going to continue with my poetry. I'm going to continue screenwriting. I'm going to continue casting and making art. And I'm really excited for where I'm going to go uh, throughout my rest of the time I have in college and just seeing all the opportunities I get to make for myself. Absolutely. Um, one of the opportunities that we have coming up, which I'll probably talk about when um, I speak, but I, I we're working on a film together and it's coming out uh, end of the year. It's, it's happening. It's scheduled. It's going on. We have a, we have a composer. We have a script. It's happening. But it, it's one of those things where it's like, we're going to figure it out. You know, we're going to keep on going. And that's just like, it's like a cool thing that you make those opportunities. So I don't know. Mwah. Okay. So <laughs> next... <laughs> Next person is Micah, and then I can go, and then we can close down this magnificent stream. All right, so, well, while you guys were going, I've been thinking about what I wanted to say. And what I did want to say was, all my life, I've used my hands. And in certain groups, they call me fingers because I do a lot of stuff with my fingers and because of what I can do with my fingers. Um, it started off as just, something to like just pass time. And then it also evolved into saving my life, basically. Um, music wasn't just a way for me to ignore people. It was a way for me to stay alive. Like I was very, I was depressed at one point, I was suicidal. And because I didn't have the strength to cut myself, I had to find something else to uh, revert the pain, you feel me? And that's when I started learning I, I spent most of the time like my first early years learning the basics like music theory music notation how to hold the instrument how to play it stuff like that I wanted to learn how to play everything before I took the aspect of now I'm going to perform I did a few performances while I was learning but you know that's school stuff and it kind of took a grasp on how things were going to turn out like me performing was going to show me what I was supposed to expect. Now, where I, I grow, where I grow up, I mean, where I grew up, I'm sorry, that was so illiterate. But where I grew up, it was, oh, you're only cool if you play sports. I didn't like sports simply because it's just, it just wasn't me. I don't know why, I just wasn't feeling it. And they were like, oh, you're tall, you're 6'5", play sports. I'm like, no, I, I got to find something else. 
And then once I started listening to music and listening to rhythm, it just, it clicked instantly. And I was like, yeah, this is what I gotta do. I gotta, I gotta hop on this. And I spent the time learning in the cut. In the cut, I don't know if you guys know what in the cut means, but I know we're all young, so. But I basically spent my time in the cut uh, perfecting my craft because I didn't want the people that hurt me to find out about my plan and then try and throw it off. So I kind of reverted back. I, 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 I stayed humble and I kept my quiet. Like people would say stuff to me. I'd just be like, mm-hmm. And I'd be like, okay. And like, it, it, just, it just helped me with my self-confidence and it helped me with my morale and stuff because at one point I wasn't able to say, oh, well, I'm doing this and you're not. So yeah, like growing up, I didn't have a lot of stuff. And being that I know the stuff that I know now with the resources that I had, it's extremely amazing because I barely had any. I didn't get my first laptop until I got it on my own this year. I didn't have my own uh, my own speaker system, my own microphone, stuff like that. I had to get it all on my own. So me doing all of that, I feel proud of myself for breaking that barrier of what people thought I couldn't do. And now I've performed for, I've, I've performed at least a thousand times at least. And I wanted to keep going up because I know that there's a way that I can change this world of my music. Absolutely. Um, so I, I, uh, I guess it's my turn. Um, <laughs> so I was an actor since I was six. And it was like, okay, cool. So I'm going to be an actress. I'm, I'm going to be an actress. I'm going to go to Hollywood. I'm going to you know, do all that. And then I went my freshman year and did the musical and I hated it. I, I don't know, I just was like, wow, why is this thing that I've loved my entire life uh, not doing it for me anymore? Why doesn't it fit? And I went through a weird kind of depressive period where I was like, okay, cool. I guess I don't have a dream anymore. And then I was like, okay, um, what am I gonna do? And my dad, he didn't really know I was going through all this. And he was like, hey, I found this uh, scrap of paper. I found this uh, ad in the in the shoppy, which is a thing which I don't know if you guys know, but it's like a South Jersey thing or like a Cape May thing. I don't know where they have like little like ads for different things, yard sales, that sort of thing. And my dad, my, he loves it. He loves the shoppy. But um, he found a Cape May Film Society uh like film camp and it was like a little bit of money and, and I could go for the week and, and make something. And um, and then I went to it and it was just, it was just so awesome. And it was so cool because I, I, I did something that I was like, okay, so I'm gonna go in here and I don't know anything. So all these people are gonna be so much more experienced than me and I'm just gonna learn, I'm gonna learn. And I did learn, but what was cool is that I acted and I screen wrote and I had the story for it because I had that innate ability, like many of you have, to, to tell stories and to, and I just did what I could to tell the story. And then after that, I was like, okay, cool. So filmmaking is friggin' awesome. That's awesome. And I was like, okay, so this is a hobby. Okay, this is a hobby. And I was like, okay, maybe I'll go and be a history teacher, an English teacher. And then I thought, oh, maybe I'll be a stand-up comedian. And I still, I don't know if you guys can get that vibe, but I still really like comedy and I still would probably perform comedy and do comedy sets. But um, it just wasn't, I realized that it wasn't like perfect for me. And so then on that path, I was making a film of my own and I made a film called Sleepover Horrors, which I, you know, you guys can go watch on my YouTube channel if you want. It's not it's not terrible. It's like, it's cute. It's a good time. And um, I submitted it into the NJ Thespian Festival. And how the films are ranked and how everything is ranked is um, fair, good, great, superior. You can, I'm pretty sure it's that. Uh, fair, good, great, superior. And I got a fair and I was like, oh no, I'm terrible at this. And what the real complaint was, was that I didn't have the technology yet, but the story was there and it was fun, you know? And then I worked really hard and then I went back to the film camp and that, then I got to do directing. Um, I got to direct, edit, 
and screenwrite the film that I did that year, my sophomore, sophomore summer. And I did a mockumentary comedy called Guarding Lives. And I love that film. It was, it was like the first time I had really produced something with, with a bigger group of people. It, I had like a cast of, I had like a cast and crew of like 12 people instead of my three. <laughs> um, and then I was like, okay, cool. I really, I really like this. I'm going to do a film for Thespian Festival again, Thespian Festival again, and here's hoping it's better, you know? And then I wrote a script and it was called Married Life. And Jasmine is the uh, lead actress in it. And it told the story of a couple from when they get married to when their daughter gets married in four minutes, which is a crazy uh, amount of emotion to fit into four minutes. But then I submitted that into Thespian Festival and I got superior. I was like, oh, wow, wow, what a learning curve that is. Um, which was mind blowing. I like fell over when they said it backstage. And then I heard that I won the New Jersey Governor's Award for it. And I was like, whoa, okay. So I guess this is like, I'm, I'm like good at this. I'm like actually good at this. And then it clicked and I was like, maybe this is what I'm meant to do for the rest of my life. And now I've been aggressively doing it ever since. I, I, I make probably around five films a year. Um, and they're like, they're like, like two minutes to like eight. Um, and I just, I, I love it. I love it so much. And, and it's what I want to do. And it was similar to how what Jasmine said, where you never call yourself aspiring. I call myself a filmmaker and I want to be a professional filmmaker. But that's, that's my path. That's my story. Um, and that's how I got this internship as well is I, after we had, we do this thing called past and present performance series. We did this thing. Now it is called uh, NJGAE presents. Um, and and she, and Priscilla had me on there, who's my boss and one of the um, got, one of the coordinators of this event. She was like, "Oh wow, um, well that was super awesome having you on, on having you on here." And I was like, "Yeah, I love being on here. If there's anything else I can do." And then she was like, "Would you like to be the intern for 2020 2021?" And I was like, uh, "Yeah, yeah, please. Actually, that sounds awesome." And I've been that um, since I did that for the summer and then it got lengthened to the, the two years. And so it's, it is about those, those, path, those, those steps and just taking the opportunities when you can get them and making opportunities for yourself. But I, I, I loved hearing all of your stories and I'm so excited that there's people like you guys in the world, there's people who are watching it right now, who are, her, who are doing their own thing. I just think it's, it's wonderful. And I'm so happy that art is such a thing which we can all have. So with that, um, are there any comments before we completely close down the stream? I have a relatively short comment that I would like yes. to make. Um, being in this call with all of you guys has uh, kind of directed me into the direction of wanting to network with you guys and work with you guys and seeing how we can all use our talents to make one big super masterpiece. So however we can do that, whichever way we can, I would love to work with you guys. That sounds awesome. I'm sure a lot of I'm sure a bunch of us would be on board with with collaborating with each other in in whatever way and I think what's cool about me having this internship and I bet Chi Chow has the same feeling and I bet you guys have uh, uh, opportunities like this I've gotten to meet so many really cool people and the film that I'm making right now with Jasmine I have a composer for the first time and I met her through the past and present performance series and I was like, hey, Claire, do you want to you wanna, uh, compose for my film? She was like, yeah, definitely. Thanks for thinking about me. And so it's, it, yeah, exactly. I think that's an awesome idea, Mike. I think we should definitely do that. <laughs> Absolutely. So any more comments before we close out the stream? Okay, well, this was an awesome night. 
This was super, super cool. It was awesome getting to have discussions with all of you. So a couple of things. I want to hear your guys' stories, you, you crazy audience. Um, please co comment and share on your Facebook and on your Instagram, your Because of Art Said story, and, um, and tag us so we can see it and we can share it on our, on our social medias. And then also remember to check out the arts, the hashtag arts ed now campaign at www.artsednow.org and take the pledge and find out how to advocate for arts education. And that is from um, Priscilla. And then also, if you are interested, this goes to you guys on the panel and you guys in the audience. If you guys are interested in being on this round table next time we do this by uh, bi-monthly. And if you're interested in being on NJGA Presents, please, please reach out to us. We will find a place to put you because we want to hear your story. We want to hear your passion. We want to hear about you. And yeah, so with that, I hope everyone enjoyed this. I hope it was fulfilling. I hope it was comforting. And um, have a great night. Stay safe. Thank you all for joining us. We all had a blast. I, I love talking to all of you, hearing all your stories. It was very motivational and inspirational to all of us and hopefully to the audience as, as well. <laughs> Thank you all so much again. And like Jocelyn said, have a great night, stay safe and continue doing the arts. <laughs> okay.